Good evening and welcome. We're going to call the regular board meeting for July 9th, 2018 for the Akron Public Schools Board of Education to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Alexander? Present. Mrs. Bailey? Here. Mr. Bravo? Present. Mrs. Lasher? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Reverend Walker? Present. And joining us tonight for the Pledge of Allegiance, as we always do throughout the summer, um, we are fortunate to have the NJROTC cadets with us tonight, so we're going to turn that over to them. If everyone could please stand for the presentation of the colors. cadets in action and to follow them as they uh, lead back from public school. So good luck to um, our senior that's joining the Army. That's exciting. Um, community and school reflections. Would anyone like to start? Yeah. Any community and school reflections? I have a couple of really quick things. Um, our student engagement committee met last Tuesday. Uh, that was the first time I've been to that meeting. Um, not surprisingly, the students were fantastic and amazing, and I left thinking, oh, they are so cool, and I wish I could have had half of their talent in 14. And, um, and we meant to like review our mission and goals. Um, and also kudos to the marketing folks. We're starting to see all that APS yes, early learning yes. stuff come out. It's really exciting. So we're currently enrolling four-year-olds, and as I'm understanding it, a lot of our students go for free, and somehow this is nominal fees so are very exciting. 11 year -old. Um, and then uh, this is just an interesting book that I've been reading as part of a project with another client it's called Race Talk and the Conspiracy of Silence. Um, I found it to be incredibly interesting so far. Uh, this is an extra copy if anybody on the board or outside would like to um, have a copy of it or share it around. It's been fantastic. And, 
talks about what it's really like to have conversations about race. Thank you. That's one thing. Uh, I was a workshop, three day workshop. Uh, I was on framing equity uh, with Dr. Perkins Consulting with Dr. Uh, uh, Perkins and his group. And the first day was interesting because I kind of was getting disappointed because I was ready to take that quick dive into what equity and more about equity. But they had a Dr. Holm who was from Columbia and he talked about board members taking care of themselves. And they thought it was uh, nice to have someone come in to talk about taking care of yourself as board members because you have to take care of yourself in order to be able to take care of your district. And it was interesting. And then you guys do a few exercises and so forth. and. Uh, I kind of try them out to see if they actually work. I'll be the guinea pig myself, and, and some of it does work. I mean, it's, it was it was pretty good. I think we all uh, can benefit from it, so I will be sharing all that information with you as well. Uh, then the, the, that was the first day, and the, the, set, the first after, sorry, the first day of the afternoon, uh, Deborah Wright, she started to, to talk on equity. What is equity? Um, how does it look for each other? It was a smaller group, so it was really nice to get a lot of interaction uh, that was going on. It talked about the best practices of equity, and we actually started looking into a couple policies, and one of the schools uh, from Roanoke, uh, Virginia, they've had their equity policy probably one of the longest they've had in, in most of the public schools uh, in the country, and so we kind of looked at a little bit of that, but we also looked at Fort Worth, and you can see both of them online, and they're really, really detailed uh, as far as when it comes to equity, but we also uh, went into that third day with uh, Dr. Perkins continued that piece, but then he went deeper into it and we talked about even more aspects of equity uh, and what do we look at in this funny that Mrs. Uh, 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 Lasher has brought up uh, this talk about race because that is one of the things they talked about. They talked about personal biases, staffing, talked about reviewing your stats and not just reviewing stats but reviewing the right stats. Uh, looking at uh, ways you align your, which we're doing with uh, our treasurer, aligning our dollars with the, the, the needs of the students. And uh, they talked about races, ethnic groups, and looking, taking a deeper dive into those things. And, and that came out to part of the, uh, the tougher conversations, they say, when you need to talk about equity, which is, uh, I didn't think that that was really part of it, but I guess it is when you start taking a deeper dive into it. So it was very, very interesting. Uh, uh, and there was so much, and I plan on, I tried to have all the handouts and they tried to go paperless, but I couldn't, I'm a, a dinosaur with technology, so I, I, I couldn't pull it up, but I'm gonna get it pulled up and I'm gonna share with all the board members so you guys can have a copy of, of that as well as the administration uh, uh, who are talking about the deeper dive. And I think Doc Perkins, uh, I've seen him do a lot of workshops and his work that he does across the, the world, so not just in, in our country, but across the world is very good. And I think it, it might be something that's, as Reverend Walker said um, um, several times uh, before, that maybe we should think about having someone come in to work with our district, and not just with our district, but as, as a board, the whole nine yards, because now we talk about equity, and they, they talk about when you're getting in deep into equity, now you're talking about really helping the students, because you're talking about every aspect of helping our students. So it was very interesting, good, good uh, three days, and. Uh, we have some more work to do, but we're, we're, at least we've started, and we're not like some districts that have not started at all. So we have, we have started, and we're, we're, we're pushing along. So I'm, I'm glad, glad we're doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, we'll move. We have no request to address the board, so we'll move on to communications and recognitions. We have the Jackson Tankersley Science Day, State Science Fair recognitions, and I know we have Karen Gijic and Katrina Halasa. And unfortunately, Katrina could not be with us tonight, so she's asked me to stand in on her behalf, and I'm very pleased to do so. So, Jackson, would you mind standing while I read about you, and you're welcome to come here to the front, or if you're more comfortable. <laughs> so, on behalf of the Science and Health Department of Akron Public Schools, we're proud to acknowledge the accomplishments of Mr. Jackson K. Tankersley. Jackson has received superior ratings in the Science Expo, our Science Fair, and the State Science Day. Jackson received the superior rating not just once or twice. Jackson has received the superior rating, that's the highest rating, right? <laughs> the first time he participated in the Akron Science Fair as a fifth grader, way back in 2012. Again, as a sixth grader, superior. Then as a seventh grader, 
superior. <laughs> As an eighth grader, superior. Ninth grader, superior. Tenth grader, superior. Eleventh grader, say it with me, superior. And as a 12th grade student, again, superior. So his, his ratings are... So his local superior ratings qualified him to be eligible all eight years for the State Science Day in Columbus, where he also received each and every year so I want to share with you his projects from fifth grade. How many trees are hiding in the mailbox? Sixth grader, wilderness water. What would you drink? And if you attended the science fair, you heard these awarded multiple monetary awards each year. Uh, as a seventh grader, text you later, the effect of manual texting and voice command texting on driving performance. Wow. As an eighth grader, the effect of wearing earphones on driving performance. Ninth grader, the antibacterial effect of green coconut water. Wow. Ninth grader, uh, tenth grader, the bactericidal effect of green coconut water on E. coli contaminated drinking water. Light up the night analyzing the, the electrical output of urine microbial fuel cells. Wow. And then, you can see how the interest continued and one year built on another. So finally, this one is the most exciting of all. The bioelectric electric bioelectricity changes in urine microbial fuel cells inoculated with livestock solid waste slurry. Wow. <laughs> so pretty impressive to do that analysis as a student. So yes. we're very proud of you. So the steering committee for the Akron Public School Science Expo did not want to have this accomplishment, this superior accomplishment, go unnoticed. So Dr. Halasa and the Science Steering Committee created a rotating plaque in Jackson's honor to be displayed at the STEM High School. And Ms. Popa will take that today. And this plaque will commemorate the Tankersley Award in our district. And students will be selected to receive the Tankersley Award annually. The steering committee plans to bestow the Tankersley Award <laughs> on deserving seniors each year. And in addition, the Science Steering Committee is providing Jackson Tankersley with his own award. The award of distinction is in the shape of an eight. He's the first student in 62 years to earn this level of superior ratings. So, awesome. President. State University in August. Um, I'm undecided on a major yet. Um, I like so many things as uh, <laughs> the, the list of projects can probably identify. Um, it's kind of hard for me to like narrow it down. Um, but out of all the projects, uh, I, I really like my last one. Um, all I've always like wanted to help people and wanted to have um, be able to do something that can help people in the future. And so all of my projects 
Um, I've kind of looked at something with a real world application, something um, that is really applicable to people, especially in like lower to middle income countries. And so with the livestock solid waste slurry um, and the urine microbial fuel cell, I really think it has the, the power to help people in low to middle income countries be able to see um, at night, whereas they wouldn't be able to and without it. So is that a weird phone call for you to call up some farmer? And <laughs> 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 it, you know, it was it was a family friend, so it was um, it was a little less awkward. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they said, you know, that's not that uncommon around here. So. Um, it was it was still an interesting conversation. <laughs> the, the worst though was um, when I made my urine microbial fuel cell. Um, I had used one of my mom's old jewelry containers with with the cells. Um, so that was probably a harder conversation. Than <laughs> <laughs> They probably took the, the biggest sacrifice. <laughs> well, you've really set a standard, and we can't right. express how proud yeah. of we are. So congratulations. Yeah. Um, Who did you have with you? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. Yeah, um, my family here. Um, Papa, and yeah, I, I want to thank all of them and. Um, especially the McWilliams Woods family and um, Coach Popa and Dr. Katrina Halasa as well. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Wow. Nice, very nice. That's education right there. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, good job. Well, I don't know how we can do that, but the rest of us will be doing that. Nice. Um, next order of business is the approval of our meeting minutes, the special meeting for June 16th, 2018, the regular meeting for June 25th, 2018, and the special meeting for June 28th, 2018. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion in the minutes before we vote? Hearing none, roll call, please. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes, I have to abstain from the 28th special meeting, and I think the 16th. Well, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Thank you. Superintendent's recommendations? Mr. President, I have before me for your consideration 30 personnel recommendations, and I have Todd Wamas here who's going to introduce three people who are up for promotions this evening. Good evening. Uh, first person I'd like to introduce is Aaron Markovic. You could please stand. So Aaron Markovic is a proud graduate of Normandy High School in Parma, Ohio. He attended Cleveland State University where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education in 1995. He earned a Master's of Arts degree in technology and education in 1998. And Aaron received a Master's of Arts degree in school administration from the University of Phoenix in 2004. In 1995, Aaron began his teaching career as an elementary teach school teacher with the Clark County School District in Las Vegas, Nevada. After nine years as a teacher, he became a facilitator for special projects in their curriculum department, and then became a coordinator in the school improvement department in 2007, where he remained for the next four years. In 2012, Aaron decided to relocate his growing family to Ohio to, re to raise here in Ohio. Um, he was hired by the public schools as a coordinator in the school improvement department. And he communicated well with staff at the building level as they worked together to improve instruction using data. Um, his supervisor once wrote in his evaluation, Mr. Markovic is a consummate professional and always acts professionally. He treats everyone with kindness and compassion. His keen sense of humor is the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> a new assignment awaits Aaron. He's ready to become the manager of testing and assessment. 
and his ability to work with people and his experiences in the school improvement department have prepared him well for this assignment. So welcome, Aaron. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Superintendent James, uh, members of the board, uh, the uh, directors. Uh, this is an exciting opportunity. I'm looking forward uh, to the work and seeing what we can accomplish. Our next individual is Mandy McKinnon. Mandy McKinnon is a proud Panther graduate of Manchester High School. In 1997, she graduated from Hiram College with a Bachelor of Arts degree in elementary education and special education. She earned her Master's of Arts degree in communication from the University of Akron in 2004. In 1998, Mandy accepted her first teaching assignment with the Dayton City School District as an elementary teacher. After two years in Dayton, Mandy decided to return to Akron and work on furthering her education at the University of Akron. Uh, Mandy joined Akron Public Schools in 2000 as an intervention specialist. Her first assignment was at Goodrich Middle School. Uh, two years later, she moved to Portage Path Elementary School, where she worked for the next nine years in a special education classroom. Her principal at Portage Path at the time wrote, she is dedicated and wants to be here. In 2010, Mandy became a literacy coach for Essex School. She returned to the classroom at Harris School for one year before becoming a consulting teacher in the curriculum and instruction department. Last year, Mandy served as an interim coordinator in the special education department. Mandy has earned the respect of her colleagues through hard work and dedication to her job. She's ready to take on this new role. So congratulations, Mandy. Just a couple people I'd like to thank. It won't take long. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. James, Superintendent, Mr. Bravo, Board President, and all the members of the board for allowing me this opportunity to, to continue the work that I'm so passionate about. Um, I'd also like to thank Terry Brady, Director of Special Ed, for allowing me to join her already awesome team. And I look forward to the work that we're going to do to support all kids in our district. And lastly, I want to thank my husband, Tom, who holds things together at home when I'm not there and offers his unconditional love and support. Thank you all. And our last person this evening is Andrea Seven. So after graduating from Blake High School, Andrea set her sights on becoming a teacher. In 2007, she earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Education with a minor in Sociology. She achieved her goal of becoming an intervention specialist. She later returned to the University of Akron, where she received her Master of Science degree in Education Administration in 2013. Prior to graduating from the University of Akron, Andrea worked in a variety of jobs in the field of education. She was a teacher's assistant for the Stark County Board of Mental Retardation and Developmental Disabilities. She was also a latchkey teacher at St. Paul Catholic School in Canton. Um, Andrea's first job as a certified teacher began in 2008 when she was hired by Wadsworth City Schools to serve as a long-term substitute teacher at the middle school level in specific learning disability classroom. In July of 2008, the Akron Public Schools hired Andrea to become a special education teacher. She was initially assigned to Goodyear Middle School. She moved to Firestone High School that year where her principal wrote an evaluation, great first year. <laughs> In 2014, she became a program specialist in the special education department. Andrea is now preparing to become a coordinator in the special education department starting this school year. She has worked hard to reach the school. So welcome, Andrea. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the superintendent, the board president, and uh, the board members, also all of the directors that are um, giving me this opportunity in this new career. I also want to thank my husband, and my son uh, for being very supportive and I look forward to uh, working with buildings and students and families uh, for students with disabilities. And with that, oh, absolutely. Yes, I, I want him to go home and have his daughters and his wife smile at him. So I want to introduce you. <laughs> <laughs> This is, uh, this is my uh, wife, Susan, and she's uh, actually a teacher here at Akron. Uh, she teaches fifth grade at Hatton. Uh, these are my four daughters, Tegan, Fallon, Bryn, and Avalon. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, Mr. 
present <laughs> these recommendations on a proper form, and I move their approval. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second on the personnel recommendations. Any comments, questions, or discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Mr. Yes. Bravo? Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Also, Mr. President, um, I regret to report the death of Marsha Cooter on July 5th, uh, 2018. Mrs. Cooter was an accounting technician in the treasurer's office and has been an employee of the Acker Board of, Board of Education for 14 years. Thank you. And, and we want to acknowledge that as a board as well and um, let Mrs. Cooter's family know that our hearts and our prayers and all the love that we can send their way uh, are with them. Uh, and to the treasurer and his staff uh, for uh, their loss. Um, you know, I've talked to some of the staff and, and heard what a presence that she was in the office. And so our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers are with them as well, because we know that this is a tough time for them. Um, and, and to the staff, uh, to the other staff that, uh, that knew Marcia. So um, we also want to take just a moment to acknowledge and I was remiss in January uh, with the passing of Judge John Holcomb, who was a previous Board of Education member for a couple of years before he became a uh, municipal court judge and served on the municipal court, I think, for about 18 years. Um, and he passed away in January, and we just want to acknowledge and uh, uh, send um, just our thanks up, uh, for his service to this community. And as well, recently, last week, it's been a very tough week, uh, we lost Betty Dalton, who served on this board uh, for a total of 21 years, uh, from 1969 to 89, and then again in 97, uh, when she filled a vacancy when Jen Laria uh, left. And she was certainly a force in this community, a philanthropist, a community leader, and many of us worked with her or served with her in some capacity, um, whether on this board or, or on others. Um, and so we just want to send her family our uh, thoughts and prayers and love and support as well and, and thank uh, them on her behalf um, for her service. Um, so with that, is there anything else? Anyone else would like to add anything? Next, Mr. President, I have before me for your consideration two motions and 11 resolutions on the consent agenda. These recommendations are in proper form and I move their approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, on the consent agenda. Any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Robert Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. And finally, Mr. President, I have before me for your consideration seven business affairs recommendations. These recommendations are in proper form, and I move their approval. So, second. We have a motion and a second on the business affairs recommendations. Any comments, questions, or discussions on those? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Baylor? Superintendent's report? Uh, just one quick report. Uh, the week before last, I, along with uh, several others, including Dr. McWilliams Woods, uh, Rachel Tecca, Beth Winter, Yvonne Culver, attended the Ford NGL conference uh, uh, in Dearborn, Michigan. Um, some of our partners attended because we gave a presentation regarding our partnerships. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, achieving our uh, forward next generation uh, learning community status. And so learned a lot uh, during that conference, of course, from other districts in the, um, uh, in the network. But I'd like to give a shout out to United Way Summit Education Initiative, uh, GAR Foundation, and, and Connexus NEO, because they also attended and presented along with us. And we got a lot of positive comments uh, regarding that presentation so um, it was a it was actually a great conference 
for my report, I was going to bring in slides uh, from vacation, but I couldn't get them done. <laughs> um, just a quick reminder, two quick reminders. One is the joint meeting that we currently have scheduled for the 19th, uh, which is next Thursday from 4 to 6.30. The location has been TBD for a, a little while now. Um, both of our uh, top two options um, did not come through, uh, which were the library and ABIA, which is where we've held it the last couple of times. So we're now working, we're looking at the possibility of uh, Central Howard. Um, nice neutral location in the center of the city with parking and an auditorium and all of that that could facilitate us. Um, so I've had uh, some uh, conversations going back and forth with Council President Somerville. So uh, once we get a confirmation on Central Howard, I'll confirm with her. And I will also be sending you out then the email probably while we're sitting here to save, uh, to be efficient. Um, just getting your thoughts um, on agenda items. Uh, agenda items that we will likely present on our behalf to them would be, of course, um, facilities updates, so the CLC update, um, college and career academies, I promise. The facilities update may also include uh, CLC use, um, so we're going to see if we can work that in, because we know once we get above two or three topics each, we start to run out of time. Uh, so primarily those three, um, and the 10 North Main. Uh, which will probably be wrapped into the facilities as well. So, and then we'll talk with um, what we'd like to know from you. Uh, and I have an, uh, something out to her to request what day she's available to meet this week so that Reverend Walker and I might meet with her and talk about what we'd like to hear uh, from the city. So you'll get an email from me probably while we're sitting here. If there's something you'd like uh, them to update us on or something, let us know. <coughs> and then we'll start working out that agenda, and in the meantime, we'll get confirmation on the uh, Central Howard and send that out as well. The second thing is, if you recall at our, the last meeting I was present um, for, we had decided that we would do the superintendent and treasurer's evaluations at the next board meeting. So if you have not, and I know a couple of you have copied me on getting those to Maryland, if you've not gotten yours to Maryland, you might want to get those in, preferably by the end of the week, so she can compile everything and get those put together for the next board meeting, and we'll do those in executive session. And I think we're planning a late meeting uh, with at least, hopefully, uh, no presentations, just to shave some time so that we can spend time in executive session on those. Any questions on that? Uh, Treasurer. No report. Committee reports, legal contracts, and board policy. New report. We have a meeting this week. Great. Finance and capital management. New report. Construction policy and student achievement. Okay. Tonight you approved uh, important interpreting services for our limited English proficient LEP students and families. Thank you very much. Currently there are 47 languages and uh, and or dialects spoken in the African public schools and we have 29 languages or dialects covered through interpretation. Additionally, you approved a, a contract with Cross Thread Solutions, a local translation service to meet the needs of limited English parents who speak the 18 languages and or dialects that our interpreters are not able to serve. They are also used by Domestic Relations Court in Cuyahoga County, ACLU, Metro Health, Akron General, and Summa Dental. Cross Thread Solutions has 200 languages available by telephone. However, this service does not replace our language interpreters, but will be used in addition to our language interpreters. Uh, regarding our sister university, you have at your seats and you'll find a template for a new concept called post-secondary partner integration or a sister university. Uh, this is a designation for our academies and we distributed this template at our last board meeting as you all remember I'm sure and would like to make a motion at this time to adopt this template tonight for all future discussions with universities and colleges to partner with our academies. Thank you. We have a motion to approve the post-secondary partner innovation agreement, Sister University College of Akron. We have a second. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions, comments, discussion? Anything, anything you'd like to add? Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, roll call, please. Mrs. Lasher? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Frapp? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any unfinished business? Any new business? All right. Well done. Pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22 G1, considered the discipline of a public employer official of the school district. I'm looking for a motion to enter into executive session. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments, questions, or discussion? Anything else before we recess? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Miller? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mrs. Baylor? Yes. Mr. Robert? Yes. Mrs. Slasher? Yes.